Hey everybody, today I want to talk about uh, MIDI and using MIDI with MuseScore. Um, MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Uh, it was developed back in the 80s as a way to uh, standardize electronic instruments, how they talk to each other. So it carries information like the start of a note, the end of a note, if there's like modulation or vibrato on a note, and I think there's some other things that it can do. But today I want to focus on how can we get a MIDI file into MuseScore. So let's say you have a MIDI part that you wrote in a separate DAW, whether it's GarageBand or um, I'm working with Ableton Live. Um, you have this MIDI part here and it sounds like this. And we can export that as an audio file, uh, which will just have the audio signal or a bunch of other uh, file types, but one of them is MIDI. And it'll have all the information of like what the pitches are, um, when the notes start, when the note stops, things like that. So from this project, we're going to go over here and say export MIDI clip. Uh, and it'll save type as standard MIDI. We will say uh, MuseScore MIDI. And we'll save it there. So now if you go look in that folder, there is a MIDI file with uh, our music in it. So now we want to open that in MuseScore. So we're going to come up to here to file. We're going to say open. We're going to the folder that has our MIDI file in it. Select the MIDI file. We're going to say open. And then we get this um, dialog box down here, which is the like MIDI importer dialog box. I forget what they call it. But um, this is where you can change how the file is imported into MuseScore. So uh, all we have is one channel, um, one line here for one instrument, because that's all we had in the other file. Um, here we could change uh, the MuseScore instrument. Uh, we could have a grand piano. We could have a toy piano. Uh, we could do an upright piano. You can set your quantization here. So usually set this at the uh, the smallest note that's in your piece. So if it's a bunch of 16th notes, you can say, I want my max quantization of 16th notes. So the fastest note that you have, go ahead and set it to um, that note length. Uh, we only have eighth notes here, so I can set that to eighth and that'll be fine. You also have things like here with, uh, you can have duplets, triplets, uh, fourplets, five, seven, nine, um, in case you have those in the music. Uh, they have this here. I've never messed with this before, but if it's a human performance, it'll, um, I think, be a little more lenient with the quantization. Uh, and then do you want clef changes, simplify duration, show staccato, dotted notes, and if there's a pickup measure or not. And if you have any swing, you can add a uh, swing or a shuffle in here. And then once everything looks good, you can say apply. And we should have this. So yeah, it brought in all of our MIDI info. Okay, so this is just for one instrument line. Uh, what if you have a MIDI file that has more than one instrument in it? Uh, it's the same process. You'll just go to File and then Open. 
and then select the MIDI file and say open. And it should bring in all the information and you'll still have all the options down here as well. Um, the, the sounds, the instruments, the quantization, the maximum number of voices, templates, etc., etc. And yeah, and then it stops the swing. Okay, so it brought in all five of our instruments flute, oboe, clarinet, horn, and bassoon. We can say that, we can say that's good to go. And this is what it sounds like. So one thing you might notice is that there isn't um, dynamic markings in the music. And that's because the information is kind of already inside the MIDI information. So there's a thing called velocity. And depending on what dynamic you mark it as, the velocity will change. Or if you're playing it on a keyboard that has detect velocity, it'll store that information inside the MIDI note. But you won't get that from the MIDI file as far as a mezzo piano, a forte, things like that. So um, MIDI definitely helps with uh, inputting. Like it would have taken me forever to input all of this by hand. Uh, this is a very long quintet and that just would have taken a lot of time just to input the notes. Um, but just know that you probably won't have dynamic markings it won't have things like the repeat markings. The music will actually play the repeats, but the markings won't be there. Or like a first ending, second ending marking won't be there. The music will be there, but not the marking. Um, and sometimes you'll run into um, funny things like uh, accidentals, or there might be some notes that are actually tied in the original music, but they aren't in here for whatever reason. Um, so if you are importing a MIDI file into MuseScore that is based on an existing piece of music, it's good to go back to that piece of music and double check that you got all the information through on the MIDI file. But if it's something you're writing by yourself like this, then you're fine. You can just bring it over into MuseScore and open it right up and you have the information there for you. Um, but yeah, MIDI is very good for uh, bringing in the notes. That's about it. Um, everything else that you might see, um, expression markings, dynamic markings, um, repeat signs, first ending, second endings, things like that you probably won't get in the MIDI file itself. But as far as just getting the raw notes in and to save you a lot of time in um, note entry, uh, MIDI is great. It is great if you can just pull in a MIDI file and then uh, you can add in your expression markings, your crescendos, decrescendos, your um, uh, performance markings, anything else like that. But yeah, that's pretty much the entire process. And it's really just getting comfortable with uh, this uh, dialog box down here, this import dialog box. Um, so definitely play around with it, see what the different uh, options do when you import something. Um, into MuseScore because you can always save it or you can always just delete it and then import it again from that MIDI file and all the information will still be there. Um, but yeah, it's really just getting comfortable with this dialog box here and uh, seeing what all those things do um, inside this dialog box. But 
Mi score works pretty friendly with uh, MIDI, and it's really nice to have as uh, a tool to get through a bunch of note entry. So, as always, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I will try to get to them. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to our uh, patrons for supporting the channel, and especially to these patrons who um, I get to mention at the end of every video um, at that tier. So if you want to be a part of that tier, you can head over to patreon.com slash oddquartet and uh, become a part of the Patreon family. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.